our database is based upon literature search that's international, reflecting information on all the good bee plants that there are worldwide. And then we have it hooked up to the land here research uh, database, um, plant names database to find out is that plant in New Zealand, etc. And the issue about using international literature and national, we're using New Zealand literature too, is that what you find in the literature is not necessarily true. And there's an awful lot of information in farmers and beekeepers' heads that is not in the literature. And so one of the things we're doing, and I'll be talking about that at the end of this talk, is we're asking farmers and beekeepers to help us by telling us what they know about these plants in their experience so that we can validate what's in our database is going to be validated for New Zealand experience. So I have told you, this, I mean, uh, Marco described the database that we're putting everything we can. Is it a good bee plant? Is it a good nectar? Is it good pollen? Is it good, um, good for the farmer in some way? Do you need it for timber? Do you need it for carbon cuts? Do you need it for uh, erosion control? All, of, all this information, is it a weed, et cetera, all this information is going into the land care research database. So we have a workshop with beekeepers and also Marco and Tony are um, agriculture officers. They know a lot, they have a lot of history in um, uh, beekeeping. So we came up with a potential, we're in our first year of a three year research project, bear in mind, and we still have to get a lot of the protein values in. With, we're, that's a long process for the next three years. But meanwhile, we already know a lot of really good bee plants. And when we did our federated farmers, um, uh, it would be John Hartnell started this project with Shona and Shona Suiz. Uh, we have here, and you'll see in the lunch room, you can get for free uh, bee plant guides and our bee and our uh, brochure from the federated farmers initial project. That was a three month project. We've now got three years of sustainable farming fund to really, really uh, do a good job on this database. So, what would a uh, good, if you say you're a farmer and you're worried about your clover, what can you do? You've lost your feral bees, you've never had a beekeeper on your property, and you want to put some lives on to get good pollination going. You want your farm to become a bee friendly farm. There's, uh, if Tony has gone over the whys and wherefores of what the bees need, what I'm going to do is just go through what you can do. Um, you, a, a bee friendly farm would have this checklist you've got to be able to nourish the bees all year. You've got to be able to have a good habitat for bees. You've got to be able to have your farm be really bee friendly, where it's attractive to a beekeeper. Nowadays, the shoots on the other foot, a lot of beekeepers are saying, I don't like your farm, it's a bee desert, my bees cannot survive there. I have somewhere else to go. So if you want to get the beekeeper to come to your property and not cost too much, then you really need to be able to have a really good bee friendly farm. So it's got to be attractive to beekeepers. It also, for your own benefit, it needs to be some financial gain out of planting these plants for bees for some other purpose in their farm. And then finally, it needs to be environmentally friendly for everybody because we don't want to be promoting environmental weeds, we don't want to be promoting agricultural weeds that we don't want to use on the farm. So nourishing the bees all year, you've got to have uh, some flowers. It looks like it might have a lot of nectar pollen, but the bees can't get access to it. So you have to have accessible nectar and pollen and, and the protein rich, which Tony has gone over. Uh, and as Tony Marco said, the, the most important things to realize is that at the springtime, you're building up your pollinator population, you're building up your, your uh, honey gathering population, so you need to make sure you've got good food then. And in the autumn, if you're preparing for winter, you've got to make sure they have good uh, food, food stores in the autumn that they can get through the winter on. And you need to have that seasonal progression through the whole year. You're providing a good habitat, Tony has explained why. So you have a checklist. Have you got shelter from wind? Have you got shelter from excess sun? Have you got a sunny site, a north facing site? Have you got fencing from livestock? Have you got clean water? This presentation, by the way, I will have put up on our website, Trees for Bees NZ, so that if you don't want to take notes, all of this is going to be on the website, this presentation. So you've got to provide that kind of good habitat. Now, how are you going to make the track? to the beekeeper, first of all, the beekeeper wants to, because we have varroa, they're going to have to get in there all year round and check on the varroa and do the treatment. So beekeepers will need road access to the apiary site. And they 
they will also, now this part, I don't know how this part will work out. You might want to talk with your friendly beekeeper about your farming and bee friendly by having some good honey plants there, which is the honey is how the beekeepers make their livelihood. That's their main product that, that, that brings in their livelihood. What we're going to be putting in our database is how much does it cost to buy that plant? Sometimes it's very expensive. How, how co-involved is the maintenance of that plant to get it started and established? All these practical considerations we've had to keep up farmers already. And, and we really have to have all these practical details in order before we recommend a plant to farmers. So uh, just two take-home messages to uh, say here is that when you're thinking about designing your bee friendly farm, you don't need to worry about summer. And it's what we're going to that here. It's the spring buildup. You need to get the plants and the, the uh, flowering time. The, the time of flowering is, is on these, these handouts.